in building your coding and data science portfolio. Documenting is one of the most important part. In this video, we're going to take a look at readme.so, which I believe can greatly speed up the creation of your project's documentation. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So let's dive in. So first thing is to click on get started and you could go to readme.so. And so let's have a look at the components here. So any project documentation would typically start with a title and a description. And so typically you would have to type in the hashtag in order to give it a H1 heading. But then for this one, if you have no idea where to start, you could just click on it, title and description. And then you're gonna see that it appears in the preview right here. And so it is simply a hashtag and a description. So you could modify this to suit your own project. And so let's call this exploratory data analysis in Python. And here you would replace this with a description of your project's documentation. Like for example, in this project, we're going to perform an exploratory data analysis of the sol solubility data sets. Okay, and then you could add other component. Let me find the author right here. You could add the authors here, and then you could type in your own data professor, and then right here. And let's see, you could add AQ, frequently asked questions. And so you can see that it automatically appears in the preview here. And so you could also reshuffle by clicking on the dotted lines here to the left of the component. And then you could drag up and then you're gonna notice that the preview, that FAQ has been shifted up because we dragged it up or we could drag it down. And so the preview is in real time. And let's say that you wanna add usage examples here, click on it and then it appears here. And then you could replace this with your own code, right? Like for example, you could say import pandas as PD is trying to rename it for me. And let's say df equals pd.read.csv file.csv logo. Okay, and the logo is placed here. And you can replace the logo with your own URL. Let's say that we want to move it up here underneath the title or even before the title. So we have the logo here and then the features right here. Let's put let's move the features up. And let's put it here. Let's move usage up. There you go. It looks like a decent readme now, right? And without a lot of effort because you could just click and then you could just modify it. Okay, so it's as simple as that. And you can see that there's a whole lot of components here for you to choose, even installation, right? So if you created your own packages, you could provide instructions for how to install it, right? Here, the installation, you click on it and then you could modify it, okay? Related, and so normally we would put related information at the bottom. Like if you're interested and you want more information, you could go to this link. So all of this are in Markdown language and you could just download it, click on download when you're happy with everything, click on download, allow, and then it'll download into your computer as a Markdown language file. Let's have a look, let's copy this and let's go to the GitHub. And let me create a repository, readme so, initiate with a readme, create a repository, and then I'll edit this, I'll replace it here, commit changes to save it, and there you go, right? So if we go to the root part of the repository, and there you go, a very beautiful readme, which takes under a minute to just click, 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 and then you could just modify this in order to suit your own projects. So the great part is that the components on the left panel allows you to quickly implement your readme by clicking on the relevant components that you would like to have in your readme. And then you could easily and quickly edit the content. And there you go. You see that the readme is fully functional and uploaded to the repository. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video.
And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.